Hi, I'm Molly. I'm here in my parents' house in Bellevue, which is a suburb outside Seattle. And it's COVID-19 time right now. So I moved back into this house because my parents passed away and I'm supposed to be selling it, but it's kind of hard to sell a house. It's, um, you can't have an open house, you can't have an estate sale, you can't do any of those things. I don't even think I could get painters in here to, to paint it. Look, here's my pup. I'm lucky I've got pups. I've got pups here with me. But I'm going through a bunch of memories and things like that because I'm here cleaning out papers and cleaning out drawers and closets and garages and all those sorts of things and going through some things that happened in my childhood which are pretty witchy. And I'm going to kind of turn this camera around and show you the outside this house. This is the yard. And this is my dad's wheelchair, which I love. It's so comfortable. And so the deal is that this house is apparently built on a spring. And when I was eight, my mother realized that this house was built on a spring and she became possessed with this idea that she was going to heal the world by kind of like freeing the spring. She was going to rebuild the house, which would have meant like tearing up the entryway, which is like behind me through that doorway. And, but her idea was she's going to tear up this whole kitchen. And because the spring is like down there in a crawl space underneath this room. And she was going to rebuild the house around a courtyard and there was going to be a fountain. People were going to come from all over the world and be healed by water they would drink from this spring. It was a beautiful idea, but obviously, you know, society doesn't like ideas like that. And my mother can be pushy. So she offended some people at, I don't know, some kind of construction store. I won't say names. And <laughs> ended up in jail and then being transferred to like a mental institution where she was drugged and wasn't sent home until she was like really too blitzed out of her mind to even know what she was doing or like what her vision originally was. So I'm here and I did some investigating and I found out that there's a creek down the street where I used to play. It's called Vasa Creek or it's actually the east tributary of the Vasa Creek, which I never knew. I just knew there was a creek, but it turns out it actually starts right there in this park down the street from my house. It's just like a block away, which means that there's probably some huge aquifer underneath here. And it probably means that the spring bubbling up underneath our house is also connected to that same underground water. And when I found that out, I became very fascinated with the idea of springs and the idea of water. And it, it gets trapped between layers of rock and layer of like solid soil. And then it bubbles up when there's so much pressure, it can't take it anymore. Like when it rains, you know, you'll see like these, these kind of like springs and creeks overflowing. It's partially because the groundwater is swelling so much. It's bursting out of the earth. <laughs> so I'm going to start a project since I'm stuck here anyway in Bellevue. <laughs> And I'm going to start going and looking at the spring heads for all the streams around here. There's Vasa Creek, there's Cole Creek, there's Lewis Creek, um, there's a whole bunch more, Richards Creek. There's a ton around here and I know nothing about them. I know that there used to be fish in them, but there can't be now because of I-90. It kind of blocks it, the freeway, which makes me think there should be some kind of fish ladder going over the freeway <laughs> or something like that. Um, if we got creative, we could have fish in these creeks again. But anyway, I want to research the history of these creeks. I want to understand what a spring means, what it means when it bubbles out of the earth and then comes forth so much that there's like life flowing out of the earth in that spot. I want to know what that means culturally, both the culture that my family came from as well as the culture that's here, because I have realized what a gift it was that I grew up in this place and I'm grateful for it. And I'd like to understand the significance of all the magic that I soaked up being here. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, Bomb. Say bye. This is Betty Bomb. Oh, yes, he's so cute. Yes, he says bye. He doesn't. He just stares at me because he loves me. He loves me so much. I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. Yes, I am. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, so I'm here in the entryway. I'm getting ready to go. I mean, my doggie's ready to go. Here's my doggies. There's Lisa. She's so excited. There's Batty Bomb. There's Odia. We're all gonna go and we're gonna walk out to the west tributary of Vasa Creek today and see if we can find the trailhead, I mean the creek head, the stream head. So 
this is not the one that's like right next to my house. This is the one that's maybe a third of a mile away. And I've never been to the to the stream head for this one. So we're gonna see if we can find it. And we're, um, I know where the trail is that heads up to it. I just don't know how far the trail goes and if we're gonna run into houses and that sort of thing. So wish me luck, talk to you later. Okay, who's next? Baby? Okay, yeah. You're next. Okay. Hey, Plumsky. He's in the storm. Okay, here we go. Here's yours. Here. Yeah, I know. Here's yours. Okay, so we go. Okay. 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 This is Odina. 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 Okay. 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 Here we go. We're all set. I put my shoes on. Okay, who's first? Come back over. Come back over, guys. He doesn't understand that he has to, like, come to me before we're going to go out the door. He thinks, like, going and standing by the door is going to be the solution. Okay, I'm turning you off now. I love you. Bye. And off we go. to the trailhead here. This is where we're heading. Right up there. And probably talking too softly. So we're going to go up this trail here and we're going to follow the ravine. We're going to follow the stream. And we will see where it goes. Keep wild like wild. Okay, we're going down the hill. Let's pull the ivy. Okay, we're going down the trail. I am your intrepid guide, do not fear. We will be okay. My filming is remarkably smooth. Despite the fact that I'm walking. So, I have some things to tell you about Bellevue before we get there. Bellevue is like, has a reputation around here. If you had grown up in the Seattle area, you would know Bellevue because it's kind of known for rich assholes and there's a reason for that. There are a lot of people um, here because 
Microsoft headquarters is like just down the street. You could easily like walk to a bus stop from where I am right now and take a bus to Amazon headquarters. Oh, I'm breathing. Heavy. There's also T-Mobile headquarters just down the road, so a lot of people move here um, because the schools, the public schools are really highly ranked, and they feel like, oh, I can get a job at one of those tech companies, and my kids can go to this highly ranked public school, and I won't have to pay for private school. That's what they think. So that's why they moved here, a lot of people. So I'm here today to show you the other Bellevue, the other side of things that I grew up with. That has nothing to do with people and what people have brought here. And it has everything to do with the land and the water and the sun and the salmon berries and what it is, regardless of what people have done. Doggies want something. Oh, they want to pee on it. I just pee on it. Being on it is good. That feels good. It feels like a connection. Okay, so I've reached something. I don't know what's happening here or what's going to happen on the other side of this road. But we have a stream. We have a pretty powerful stream coming out of this culvert. I think it is. It's going up underneath the road, so we can go across the road and see what's happening. Thank you. Okay, so I think this has something to do with the sewer. I don't know what. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's water coming in from the left, that's the east. That's like it's a storm over there, like storm drain. And then there's water coming in from all sides, basically. It's coming in from south east and west, and it's heading north. Interesting. Gosh, this isn't as clear as I thought it was going to be. I thought there would just be a spot, but now it's forking in two directions. So, I kind of think I'm concluding what I was concluding at home about our spring, which is, I don't think there's like a spot where the stream starts. I'm going to keep following these, but like, I think my thought of like the spring underneath our house probably is bubbling up from the same aquifer that the East tributary is coming from is probably true and um, I love that thought. I'm so happy about it. I just don't even know how to tell you how happy I am that this entire land has water underneath it. I'm so happy. Talk to you soon. We're back. Everybody's drinking their water and I'm gonna go try and find a more Specific, like particular trailhead without the doggies because they kind of got scared. At least Lisa got scared of the kind of like the gushing water. So I'm gonna go back again another time. In the meantime, we miss you all. Good to see you. Much love from Waggy Tail Doggies. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Love you. Later.